My dad was a poet, and he had this wonderful habit of organizing poetry groups in Seattle. He had a group of poets who used to meet every first Sunday of the month at, at our house. And December 7th was the first Sunday of the month, and he was arrested while he was having his little Senyukai group because of Pearl Harbor. When the war broke out and we were going to be evacuated, I just remember this overwhelming sadness of not having my dad. And my mother was just inconsolable. So that was a, the most devastating experience, I think, of, of my life. The general public at that time probably felt it was quite logical for the Japanese to be taken away, that we were being put into camp for our own protection, which of course was a big lie. I think that we were on our way to the train station when that picture was taken getting off the bus to get on the train to Idaho, to Minidoka. Uh, the photographers were ready, waiting there to take pictures of us leaving. Evacuation. As we boarded the bus, bags on both sides, I had never packed two bags before on a vacation lasting forever. The Seattle Times photographer said, smile. So, obediently, I smiled, and the caption the next day read, Note Smiling Faces, A Lesson to Tokyo. Note Smiling Faces, Attesting to Good Treatment in the Camp, A Lesson to Tokyo was the exact wording in the caption of the photograph. I looked at the picture and I, why am I smiling, you know? And then I remembered that it's a kind of an automatic response when somebody tells you to smile and you just, just kind of mindlessly do what somebody tells you to do. At that moment, I don't think we had any idea that they were going to use this photograph that was taken by the Seattle Times as a salve to their guilt feelings about what happened. I think that the accurate would be to, to show that it was a violation. It was an outrage, actually, an outrageous thing to do. We need to start rewriting our history books, maybe, and talk about the, the, the concentration camps and what happened and why and what the government could do with one executive order to 120,000 people in this country two-thirds of them who are American citizens. I think the American people need to know that it was something that, that should not happen again.